podcast. My name is Lisa. I am Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry, and I welcome you to my home. I live in a little harbor town just north of Boston called Marblehead, Massachusetts. And as I said, we right out my window here, about a block down, um, is the harbor, so we live almost on the water, not quite. And we are very lucky to live in a very old house. This house was built in 1750 as a warehouse, so it's really not that big, but it's kind of quaint and cozy. And it was converted into a residence in 1850. And so we feel very, very lucky to be basically the caretakers of this very special um, property. Uh, this is a knitting podcast, so welcome. And we will be doing several things today. Um, I'm gonna to talk about my finished objects. I have a few today to show you. We'll talk about my works in progress. We will talk about spinning that I've been doing. Um, we will have the winner for last month's Meet the Designer. And we will introduce a new designer uh, this, uh, this month. Um, and then we'll have some chatter and some pictures at the end. So let's get started. Finished objects. I have three to show you today. I think some of them you've seen as works in progress. Um, the first one is a pair of socks. I did finish. I was doing a test knit for uh, Shara Maid, and these are the Tractus socks. And I do have two of them. I just have one on the um, on the sock blocker right now. But aren't these lovely? This is using Yoshi and Lucy yarn. So it has this lovely uh, lace pattern up the front. It has ribbing all the way up the leg, and a little bit of a cuff. It has a short row heel, and it, they are toe up. My favorite type of sock, but I just love them. I think that they are just beautiful. I uh, test knit the larger size, so these actually I think I'm gonna give to Sophia uh, because they're a little bit, um, maybe a little bit large on me, but that's okay. She always loves to hand knit socks. Um, so these are gonna be hers, but this is my first finished object and they are, again, the Tractus socks and they are available now on Ravelry. So go and check those out. The second pair of socks that I have finished, I have had finished for a while, and these are called the Whispers in the Walls by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And this is part of her Swish and Flick collective. So I've had these done for quite a while, I just haven't been able to show you. But they're super beautiful. These are cuffed down and they have a lovely, um, they have a lovely lace pattern right in the middle. And then they have uh, this, um, I think, I can't remember if they're a mock, kind of a mock cable right here down the, down the side. They do have a heel flap and gusset. Um, so this is a challenge for me because I usually knit my socks toe up, but this was a beautiful pair and I was really happy to, um, happy to, um, to do these. And so there, as I said, they're part of the Swish and Flick collective, which is out now. So you can purchase the entire collective. I think there's six patterns in, um, in it and they're all fantastic because of course they're made, they're um, designed by Kay. So this was a lovely, lovely, um, pattern to knit. I really highly recommend it. So we'll go and check that out as well. And then the third thing, I've been working on a lot of things, but the third thing that I have completed is something I just kind of thought to, um, kind of thought to pick up. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. If you remember, um, I have been, um, I had been spinning over the last, I don't know, over the last year, really over the last year or so, uh, last couple of years on this, I had got this beautiful, beautiful fiber in a fiber share package and I, um, it's just beautiful lavender colors and I finally spun those bats up. They're gorgeous. I spun those bats up and then I ended up um, plying them with some uh, cone of lace weight, um, cream or white lace weight. I think I showed this last time. So this is actually the yarn and it's really beautiful. It has so many lovely, lovely, lovely colors um, in it. And so I really wanted to use this and I wasn't sure what to do with it. Um, but then I remembered that I had purchased quite a while ago now, I think, the Puddle Wonderful Cowl by my friend Tanya, uh, Tanya Marie Willis. She's the sampler girl on Instagram and on Ravelry. She has some really beautiful patterns of shawls and things. This is a really lovely um, a cowl pattern. And this, um, this is just so soft, totally next to the skin soft, not a bit of itch in it whatsoever. So I thought it would actually be perfect for a cowl. I was, gonna, I was thinking about making maybe some type of a shawl, but it feels a little bit thin thick or fluffy for um, for a shawl. So this is what I thought I would do. Um, I may end up making a matching pair of mitts to go with this. I probably still have enough maybe for a hat, so I'll see what I do with the rest of this. But I'm just really happy to be using this hand spun. And what I did is I paired it with um, some Barocco Ultra Wool white or cream that I had in my stash for another project. Might even have been Sophia's stash. 
I might have taken it from her. I don't know. We have a lot of knitting bags kind of mixed up together, and <laughs> she tends to start projects and not really finish them. So sometimes I go looking to see what I have. But I have I had this extra um, extra white in it, so it really matched really well. I thought. And the puddle, wonderful cowl, is just really beautiful. It's just beautiful, beautiful textured, textured piece. And so here it is. It's not blocked yet, so I didn't block it. But as you can see, um, you probably can't. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna see. You, you know, it has some some um, knit and pearl ribbing almost in here for a couple of rows, and then it has some beautiful patterning. So it, on some of the places, you're using two yarns, so you're doing a little bit of color work, but really not much at all. Um, and then there's some plain stockinette sections in between, and I just thought it was really nice. I think the, the white um, uh, kind of um, just really accents the loveliness of the, of the hand spun, actually. So I'm very, very happy with that. Let's see if you can see the texture up close. But it's really nice, and this is just going to be really nice to wear around my neck um, during um, next winter. Not right now, because it's pretty hot today. but. Um, but it's really, just really super. I really like how all the colors came together and um, how they're just lovely lavender kind of muted, muted colors. There's some pops of yellow, as you can see in there as well. Um, super happy. It also had a little bit of silk, so that's why you see some of these, you can see some of those little nubs from the, from the silk. And that's where, that's where that comes from. But overall, I am super happy with this. This is just a great, great pattern. And again, this is the um, Puddle Wonderful Cowl by, um, uh, by the Sampler Girl. So you can check that one out as well. And those, that's good. Those are my three, really my three um, completed objects for right now. Um, now let's take a look at some works in progress. Works in progress. So if you remember, I am trying to do hashtag 321 create um, this year. And so that means I really am focusing just using three or, or working on three um, projects at a time. And that just kind of helps um, not be overwhelmed by all the, uh, all the knitting. Because um, sometimes I tend to, I will be, you know, I'll cast on a lot of things and then I just, I won't feel like I get anything done because I'm just working a little bit on a lot of projects. So I'm really also focusing on doing some sweaters this year. I really have enjoyed doing the sweater, do, doing the sweaters last year. So I'm really trying to focus in on um, making sure that I always have a really um, interesting sweater on um, on the go this year. And so along with that, I will um, I'm give, you know I'm having two other um, two other projects now. Sometimes I do have a couple of long term projects. Um, I showed you the assembler last time, and I certainly am working on my bits and bobs blanket um, over time when I just want to pull something super super simple out. Um, but basically, I really am, am focused on three projects at, at one time, which is I, I've actually found to be really um, interesting and uh, working well for me uh, for me this year. The first one that I am working on here is the uh, my sweater, and this is uh, I'm knitting this with um, Primrose um, Primrose Yarn Co. Um, yarn uh, that I got in a um, at the um, Knit local uh, get together that we that we had. So I, I have a sweater's worth of this lovely color of, of yarn. So I'm using this, and um, it's called the the uh, sweater is called the Raw Work Trees. It's by Catherine Schneider, and it really is a beautiful um, a beautiful sweater pattern. It's a little bit oversized. Um, it, this particular yarn I think is going to block out um, very very nicely. And this is a pattern that would work in uh, this type of yarn. This is uh, obviously processed yarn. It's hand dyed, but it's processed yarn. This would be a great, great pattern in really rustic yarn um, as well. I could see making this, you know, in some um, in, in some hand spun, um, in just some really woolly wool that's not that's not smooth, smoother processed the way this yarn um, this yarn is. It's really an interesting, a really great uh, pattern. Um, and the only, really the only, it's actually very simple. The patterning is only on the front of the piece. And the back is all stockinette and this, the sleeves are basically stockinette as, um, as well. The hardest part of working on this project is actually using the hand dyed yarn because as you can see, it, this, I'll take this right off, but this yarn is very, very tonal. So there are lots of different, um, you know, there's there's some kind of browns in it. There's some darker greens and lighter um, lighter greens. It's more olivey uh, than it's kind of showing up here on camera. But it is lovely. But it's very tonal because it's hand dyed. And so I have, you know, they 
the uh, dyers do the best they can to make each of their skeins consistent, but it's hand dyed. So what I really have to do, and because I'm using this in a big in a big piece, it wouldn't matter if I was just making a cowl or a hat at all, but because I'm making a big piece, I am alternating skeins every two rows. So that means I have to have two balls of yarn. I'm juggling two balls of yarn and, you know, kind of making sure that they, they don't get tangled up. So for me, that's the only issue with this, and it's not an issue at all. It's just something to be aware of when you're using lovely tonal or variegated yarn. And the, really the reason why you'll do this, and I'll show you, is you really just don't want to have a line, a demarcation line, where you can look at the piece and go, oh, that's where I changed the skeins. And, I, you know, that's why you don't use an entire skein in one big block, especially on something that has... Um, stock in it, in it, but if you if you alternate skeins every two, three rows, that kind of goes away, and all the colors just meld in together. So it's just something to keep in mind if you want to do a large project with hand dyed um, hand dyed yarn like um, like this. But anyway, here it is. So I actually have quite a bit done now. I have the entire front of the piece. The top stitches are on hold right now because you come back at the end and do the and do the neckline. So I have the whole front done here. And as you can see, here's the back. And now you can see here, because this was, um, I use, I probably have um, actually uh, using, have used now four different skeins in this piece of it. So you can see if I had used, I think it blends fairly nicely. No one would look at that and go, oh my gosh, there's a line demarcating, although there is a little bit of it. This, I had one skein um, in the grouping that had lots of this beautiful, it's beautiful, it's kind of rust color, um, but the darker yarns. Now, if I had just used that skein at the bottom, there would be all of this would be all bunched together. And then when I moved to the next skein, you would just, it wouldn't be there anymore. Now, it isn't there anymore, but it kind of flows in naturally. It doesn't look like a huge demarcation line there. And you would not, even as a knitter, you would not sit there and go, oh my gosh, that's exactly the place where she used one skein of yarn and into the next. You really wouldn't see that um, at all. And that's really why you do that, because literally, if I had this, I would have these huge blocks of patches of deep rust and red down here, and there'd be nothing like that up at the top. So, I mean, and these skeins are beautiful. The, the colors are gorgeous. The, 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 um, the tones of the green are just absolutely marvelous. But, so that's, that's a good example of why you do that. So, there's the front. And I actually have completed one of the sleeves. I just completed that yesterday. And again, I'm doing the same on the sleeves. I'm running through and using two, um, two skeins of yarn um, on each, each of these. And then it just has a little bit of a rib down at the, down at the bottom. So I'm really super pleased with this. This is going to be um, my probably my main Rhinebeck sweater this year, um, so I'm really happy with this. And my sister-in-law Tracy is doing this, and a couple of other of our friends are actually going to be knitting this pattern as well. So that'll be really fun because you know we're not using the same yarn at all. So I'm really interested, as I said, to see this maybe done in a more rustic yarn. Um, it it'd be really super beautiful. Just think of like in a really rustic gray color or um, even a rustic kind of a brown color, gray. I mean, it would just be really beautiful. It's beautiful in this green color, and I really like the I really like the green, and um, I'm going to be really excited about wearing this um, at Rhinebeck, but I'm hoping that everybody actually <laughs> gets their sweaters done, and we can have a big a picture with all of us um, together with this, so I'm really super pleased with this, and I'm almost done. I'm going to start on the second sleeve, and then I just have the top to do, and then I'll be happy, able to move on to my next sweater, so that'll be pretty exciting. So this is my main project. This is a lot of what I've been working on, um, kind of watching TV. As I said, it's not the the patterning on the front. It, it looks lovely, but it really is not that complicated. Once you know, kind of know what you're doing, you can easily follow um, follow it along. So I, I really recommend. This is a beautiful, beautiful pattern, and this is a piece that I will wear for years. So I'm very, very happy with um, happy with this. Uh, let's see. The second one that I'm working on, which, which I got multiple bags here. Let me see. I think, is it this one? Yes, it is. So <clears throat> I picked up a really cool skein of yarn at, um, at the Knit Local. Again, our, we had our swap table. I picked up a really cool um, skein of yarn. It is by um, Juliana's Fiber, and it is Lucid Dream Sock Yarn. So it's um, superwash merino and nylon, and it's really cool. It's called Prism. And so this yarn is basically all black, except for one section where she dyed it with these really neon, uh, super neon colors. And so I, I thought, you know, I'm going to make a pair of socks with them, um, a pair of socks with that. So the yarn, well, you can't really see the yarn. It's all tied up in my yarn sock. This is one of my big tips here. <laughs> when you put a skein, you know, when you wind up a skein, 
um, you need something to st stick it in. So I'm, I have some, you know, actual yarn socks that you can purchase um, that I've gotten in swaps. But you know, basically, I just grab a, an exercise sock and throw it around there. So then you're not worried about the outside of the skein falling apart, and you just pull it right from the middle, and it works great because I do a lot of travel with these um, with these projects. So. I am doing uh, another pair of the Sanderson Sister Socks by my friend Sarah Losey. And um, Sarah lives over in Lynn, and she is um, my compatriot in Hufflepuff on the Oloops uh, Harry Potter Knit Along, which I cannot believe is coming up again in October. Um, but uh, Sarah does some really great sock patterns, and I have knit, I think this is probably my third pair of Sanderson Sister Socks, which I really like. Um, where did my... I'm going to grab one of the sock blockers because then you can see it um, see it better. I have one done and I'm working on the second second sock now. And the yarn is super cool. Just get that right on here. And there, so, oh, there it is. Okay. So these socks are knit um, toe up, which is my favorite. So toe up, but it's really cool. So you can see how, um, you know, in the skein, all of this uh, all of this, these neon colors were just on one side of it when I took the skein out into the circle, and it was just on this one side was all these beautiful, really cool neon neon colors. Um, but when you knit it up, it's, it comes out um, semi striped. So that's why I thought it would be a great pair of socks. And so you can see, and the Sanderson Sisters is just really great. It's super. It is, um, of course, named after the Sanderson Sisters from the uh, Hocus Pocus movie. So, um, you know, of course, and Hocus Pocus is re it's, um, it's one of our favorite uh, Halloween movies anyway. And they filmed a lot of it here in Marblehead. <laughs> so, and, um, you know, and uh, Sarah's a friend of mine. So all these things, good things come together. But this is a really great pattern. This, they are um, left and right uh, particular because the, um, the patterning just runs on the outside of one sock. So on the first one, you do it on one side, and on the second, you do it on the other side, which is really great. So these are perfect bust knitting because the pattern is pretty simple. There's some slip stitches in here and some purl stitches, but you know, you're just basically going toe up. And once you memorize the pattern, you're just you know on your way. Um, I always do a fish lips kiss heel, or I prefer the fish lips kiss heel. It just it fits me well. Um, so um, that works, that just works for me. So that's what I, um, that's what I usually do. Um, yep, yeah, so I have one already completed and I have the second one on the go. And these are really for me because they actually do fit me. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm excited about, um, about those as well. Um, even though I can't wear wool socks right now because it is too hot, but we'll get there. We'll get there before we know it actually, before we know it. And the third piece that I uh, actually just cast on, I don't have very much of this left. I mean, I don't have very much done yet, but it's called the Jessica Jones hat. Um, and this is on Ravelry. It's by smine.net. And she, um, she put together this, I think, I guess, I don't watch Jessica Jones, but I guess Jessica Jones wears this big gray, or a lot of the times wears a big gray um, linen stitch scarf maybe, but that's what this is based on, this pattern. And this is my leftover still. I had two skeins of this and I used it um, to make a cowl, uh, the Kepri cowl, and then I used it to make the Wooly Wormhead hat. And I still have tons of this. This is by Kayleen, uh, Little, uh, Little Bean Loves Wool. And it's just gorgeous. I love these jewel tone colors. So I have, I got quite a bit here left. So I thought I would make this. And this is a hat, this is gonna be a hat. And it doesn't look like much right, right right now because but it's just it starts out with a linen stitch brim and then you actually just change to uh, larger needles and then knit the rest of the hat so it's gonna be a little bit of a slouchy uh, hat but all in linen stitch so you know linen stitch basically is that you um, you have to have a um, odd number of stitches and you um, knit one stitch bring your yarn forward slip a stitch and bring your yarn back and knit the next stitch and then what happens is that because you're doing an odd number, once you get going, um, you are doing the opposite, um, the opposite stitch from the, the row below because you have odd numbers. So, so for example, on this, you can see they kind of pair together like that when you do that. So this one, my, my, my next, um, my next working is going to, is going to be, um, you know, a knit stitch on top of a slip stitch and then a slip stitch on top of a knit stitch. And that basically, it looks, it kind of comes out looking almost like it was woven. So that's what that, that stitch is all about. 
and um, it's really, it's it's a um, it really is a mindless uh, stitch, but it really looks nice at the end at the end of it. It is some people don't have patience for it because you're moving your yarn back and forth and back and forth, but I don't mind. This is basically the kind of thing I'll just pick it up as I go. Um, it'll go pretty quickly. I'll be using it as bus knitting on my commute into Boston. So I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this. This will be just a nice throw on piece for um, for the winter, and then I can wear it with the cowl that I knit. And um, yeah, so this yarn is beautiful, and it's gone a long way. And I am loving knitting it. I want to knit every single piece of this beautiful yarn by uh, by Kayleen. Um, so really happy with starting this as well. This is great to kind of sit outside in the in the ocean breezes um, and work on as as well while listening to some podcasts or watching some podcasts. So yes. So those are my three works in progress right now. So let's move on to some spinning. Spinning. Well, it is uh, currently the Tour de Fleece. <laughs> if you're not familiar with that is, um, what that is is that um, many spinners will get together uh, during the Tour de France. I always want to call the Tour de France Tour de Fleece now. Um, and so for that, for that period of time, I think it's July 6th through July 28th, something like that. I'm not quite sure. Um, but for all the days that the uh, Tour de France is actually um, running, and not on the off days, but every day that the Tour de France is running, that you commit to spin um, something every day. It doesn't have to be a lot, it, you know, 15 minutes a day, whatever you want to do. But you can, in Ravelry, you can join teams on Ravelry, etc. Um, so I did Tour de Police a couple of years ago, and um, I haven't done it in a while, but I have this beautiful, beautiful fiber that I want to spin up. So I thought I would just go ahead and do that. It's just like, kind of like a little bit of a mini incentive to, um, to, get, things, um, to get things done. Um, so let me show you. This is the beautiful, beautiful fiber that I have from uh, Carolyn, um, who is Marin Gusset um, on, on Ravelry, and I am a patron of hers. She and her partner Knut um, have a spinning mill in Sweden, and they are in the process. It's a very old mill. It's a very old building with very old machines, but they are determined to make it work, and it's just lovely. Um, uh, Caroline has a, uh, she has videos that she puts up that you can only see if you're, if you are a patron. And, um, she just talks about her life in Sweden with her daughters and, uh, what it's like to actually have a, a mill, all the difficulties that go along with it and all the joys. And it's, it's just lovely. She's very, has a very calming persona. She spins a lot herself. She knits beautiful, beautiful patterns. And I am just really pleased to be a part of this, um, startup there so this is really beautiful beautiful Swedish Swedish fiber you can see this lovely it's lovely I'm I got a lot of greens going on here but I love this just this beautiful um, oh it's just a soft mossy kind of a green color and they they don't over process their fiber it's beautiful it it it, um, it drafts beautifully there's really nothing there's no pre-drafting that you need to do with this but they do leave a little bit of the lanolin, and, and I love it too. You can see some of the, you probably can't see it on the camera, I'm not sure, but there's like these beautiful dark, um, probably uh, type, probably like guard hairs almost that are, are in here. They're super soft, but they just don't take up the, take up this, the, the um, take up the, uh, the color. Maybe they're just blend, just beautiful, the, some other, um, some other fiber that they've blended in here, but it's just lovely. They're just all these little dark fibers that are in here too. It's just going to be it's beautiful, beautiful colors. So, um, soft and gorgeous. So they don't, pro as I said, they don't process over process it. So there is not a lot, but there is lanolin in this when you are spinning it. So, um, a lot of times when you hear the term scouring or you're going to, you know, you're going to wash the fiber or wash a fleece when you get it. Now I am not one of those I am not for that. I really don't have a lot of interest in actually buying a fleece and processing it myself. But many times when you, you know, if you buy commercial top um, or you buy um, commercial commercial wool to, um, to to spin, most times there's really not a lot of lanolin left in it. Um, but there is a, a little bit, it's not, it's not a lot, but there's just this beautiful, beautiful amount of lanolin in this. And it is enough um, to kind of, it kind of helps the fibers 
stick together a little bit. They're not sticky. I guess that's not really the right word, but in there, when I am spinning this, my fingertips, the lanolin comes off on my fingertips because you know the heat of your hand is going to melt some of that lanolin that's on here, really, and it just feels so soft and really wonderful. And that's the first time in spinning that I've had this experience. I really, I'm not, I just, you know, I just haven't. The the um, the fiber that I've received has been processed. It just has had most of the lanolin taken out. This is the first time I've actually spun with some lanolin that I can feel. And it is, it's, it's just, oh my gosh, it's just the most wonderful feeling on my fingertips. Now I said there's not a lot of it in here. So there's no, it's not, you know, the, the fiber is not difficult to, to process, uh, to, um, to pull out whatsoever, but it's just enough to make it, it, it's like this little gift that I have when I'm spinning this, and I really, I'm really um, totally enjoying that. Now, the the yarn that I'm spinning, I'm going to show this to you, is really beautiful as well. So this is beautiful yarn. You can see I'm spinning it, um, spinning it fairly, um, fairly, fairly thin, not completely thin, but you can see as it spins back on itself what that's going to be. So that's probably, um, it's maybe a little, it's fingering, it'll be, you know, fingering weight, maybe a little tad on the heavier side of fingering. It's certainly not DK or anything like or worsted at all. It's going to be really fairly fine, but it's just beautiful and uh, it's very sheepy and it will hold together very, very well, but it is just beautiful. I have four bumps like this. I've done one and a little bit of this one, so I have two more to go. Um, I will probably do these full two and then I'll apply these two together because I have plans. I have plans for this. I can't imagine, I don't think this will be ready for Ryan, but probably not, but maybe by that time I'll actually be working on it. So I have this beautiful fiber here and I might have mentioned, but um, a couple of months back, uh, the Woolly Thistle, um, uh, Corinne had a, ha was having a sale and I picked up a cone, and again, this is the first year I've ever bought cones. You know, I bought the I bought two lace cones from from Webs that were on sale, and then I bought this cone uh, from um, from the Woolly Thistle. And this is actually Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight, and it's I got a ton of it. <laughs> I forget it well, it wasn't very expensive. That's why I thought I would I would pick it up and try it. But this is amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna stick the bottom of it here in here. But look at this, look at how much of this this is. I mean, I'll be going, I'll be knitting on this for years. This is amazing. So it is, um, you know, it's basically fingering weight. And it's this lovely gray color. And I'm thinking that these two colors will be beautiful together. Absolutely beautiful. So what I am planning to do with this is um, another Jennifer Steingast. Uh, you know, I really like Jennifer Steingast. I like her construction. It seems to fit me well, which is great. And I am thinking of doing the garden gate pattern. So the main color will be this beautiful gray, and all of that lovely color work will be that beautiful, beautiful green. And I think this will be phenomenal. So it's got color work in the top, and then it has, uh, I think it's got some uh, nope, nothing around the bottom of the body, but it does have it on the on the on the sleeves, on the cuffs. So this is what I'm planning to do with this lovely hand spun and then this big cone of Jameson and Smith. I'm gonna knock everything here because I've got it on there. But so this will be an upcoming knit. I'm pretty, pretty excited about about this. So the green, I'm gonna try to get through, I'm going to try to get through, finish that bump that I have there, and finish up this bobbin and then start another one with the second one and maybe get through the both both bobbins. Um, I probably won't get through both bobbins and apply it together before the end of the month, but maybe. Just depends. I, I don't have that much time, you know, by the time you get home at night, but I'm trying to do a little bit each um, each day. So um, I'm really, really happy with, uh, with the way this is coming out, and I'm really looking forward to knitting, um, to knitting this up and putting it in this sweater. So keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Meet the Designer. Meet the designer. Well, if you've been watching my podcast, you know this year that I have been um, been doing this new section called Meet the Designer, and this has come out of the, a response to all of the uh, amazing discussions that have happened on Ravelry and um, on Instagram as well um, regarding um, 
uh, uh, white supremacy, diversity, um, all of these beautiful, beautiful topics that really need to be um, need, need to be discussed. Um, there's been controversy, but there's really been some interesting and, and heartfelt discussions coming out about them, and it's something that we need to continue. Um, and what, what I have taken away from this is that I have actually been um, introduced to so many new designers because of this, because of comments and people, um, people recommending new designers, et cetera, because we all know that there certainly are wonderful, wonderful designs that are, um, that are out there. But you will see on the front page of Ravelry, you know, you will see the usual, kind of the usual suspects. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and these designers um, have beautiful patterns, and I certainly have knit many of their many of their patterns. But there really are, as in anything else, there are just so many people doing so many interesting things, um, and it really they're artists. And what I have been hoping to do is to kind of introduce people to some artists, some designers that maybe you haven't seen yet. Um, and what I am doing each month is I'm gonna I have a um, a thread opened in Ravelry for the meet, meet the designer for each episode. And what I ask you to do is to be a member of the Ravelry group and to take a look at the patterns that are available for sale on Ravelry. And I will have a link at the bottom of this video. And choose one of those patterns from this designer and tell me why you would like to knit it um, and you know what you love about it, maybe what you like about this designer and why you would like to knit this particular pattern. And if you are the winner, and I do a random draw each month, and if you are the winner, I will gift you the pattern um, that you have chosen, and I'll be really excited to see um, to see you knit knit it up. Um, so last month, our designer was Lana Joy, and we had um, uh, we had 23 entries. We had numbers two through 24, and I did a random dot org, not Mary Beth, <laughs> uh, a random dot org, and it chose number 16, who is Sharon Big Needle Girl, and she she chose the Nazarene pattern. And she said that uh, Lana's designs are gorgeous. I would like to knit Nazarene because I just started knitting sweaters and this would be a very nice addition. So Sharon, be on the lookout um, in your uh, Ravelry message box and I will get in contact with you um, about this, this pattern and I will get this gifted to you. So now our next uh, designer for this month is uh, Lauren McElroy and she is known as Mother of Pearl. And she has a web design, oh, a, a, a website called motherpearl.net, and she is someone that I actually saw her patterns first in um, Yarn People magazine, which is I think a quarterly magazine um, that you can order online, and it's really it's it's really it's really a great um, a great magazine. I think I got the first one. I think I missed the second one, but I'm going to be I I will be looking for the next one when it um, when it does come out. She has many many different patterns. She does sweaters, hats, wraps, etc. Um, so I'd like to kind of read a little bit um, while I'll show you some pictures um, of some of her patterns as to where kind of what her background is. So she says, My home business is located in the beautiful rolling hills of rural Wisconsin, the occupied land that is the traditional and ancestral home of the Osati, Sakowin, the Sioux, Ho-Chunk, Sauk, and Meskawaki peoples. I am deeply moved by natural beauty and pure aliveness that the land offers. Thank you for being part of my dream. What is my dream exactly? Well, I realized I love to knit. So it definitely involves knitting. I love it when other people use my patterns and I can keep designing and inventing. I envision my business as one that uplifts and empowers women and especially women of color. You will be seeing women of many shapes and shades, not only looking good, but also doing good. I will definitely be using this attention-getting gift of mine to share my ideas for a world where we all, human and non-human life, are able to express our innate purpose of being deeply connected to each other. I recently picked up spinning and love the feel of fiber as it twists in my fingers. I knew when I began to knit that it was only a matter of time before I wanted to master the whole process. So here I am starting from scratch, hand skirting, washing, picking, carding, and spinning fibers into yarn. Yarn that can then make masterful pieces of wearable art. This passion is a calling to know and live my life according to the deep truth that everything is alive, calling us into our calling, reminding us to resonate and point to the divine. So I hope you've been able to take a look at some of um, the patterns that she has. On her website she also um, sells hand spun yarn which is fabulous and she also sp spins, um, she also sells uh, actually um, knitted products as well so you can purchase hats and things from 
um, from her. So she is just seems fabulous, and I'm very very excited to highlight her, um, highlight her this this month. I just love all the patterns, and she uses she uses hand spun quite a bit, but she really uses some beautiful colors, um, etc. And I think she's a great uh, a great um, a great designer to to take a look at. So as I said, I will have a um, thread set up in the Knitting by the Sea Ravelry group. So please become a member and then go over there and tell me, take a look at the patterns that she has available for sale on Ravelry and tell me which one you would like to knit and why. And then next month I will choose a winner and hopefully that will be you and you will be able to, um, to knit up one of um, her fabulous patterns. All right, so let's move on to the next section. So what has been happening here? Actually, quite a bit. <laughs> I, um, I'm on vacation this week, so that's really uh, something special. I look forward to this every, every year. Um, you know, I usually take the, we get the, the week after Christmas, um, between Christmas and New Year's off anyway, but um, I usually try to take a, take a week in, in July. Um, and I try to take it the week after the 4th of July because 4th of July here in Marblehead is a little bit crazy. And of course it was crazy this year. Um, this year it was even doubly crazy because it was a Halifax boat race. I might have mentioned this before, but every two years there is this really big yachting race called um, the, the Marblehead to Halifax Nova Scotia race. So, and it's co-sponsored by the Boston Yacht Club right here and the Nova Scotia Squadron, Halifax Squadron um, Yacht Club. And basically what the, um, the boaters are, are, I think they were probably... I don't know, 60 to 70 boats this year. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but around 60 to between 60 and 70 this year. And the folks from um, Halifax sail down and they all get together here. There's three or four days of preparation, partying, etc., And then they take off from Marblehead here and they, um, they uh, race up to Nova Scotia and then they continue to have some parties when everybody <laughs> finally pulls in up at up in Nova Scotia and Halifax. Um, so that only happens every two years. So this is one of those, this was one of those years and we won't have it next year, but we'll have it the year after. Now, you know, we're members of the Yacht Club here. We have a parking space in front of our house, um, but for the Halifax, and we can also park, we can park in the, um, in the parking lot for the, for the race. But um, during the, uh, oh, that's some fiber in from the last section on my, my tongue. Um, but uh, during the Halifax uh, boat race, the parking is somewhat limited because there are just so many uh, people coming in, so guests from, from Halifax. So, and what also happens is that um, the, for the race, they bring in a large container truck uh, and they park it in front of, um, in, in front of the, the gate um, to the Yacht Club. And so we actually have a parking space in, really in front of our house. And so what we end up having to do is move uh, move our car from that space for a couple of days while that um, while the um, while the truck is is there loading up for um, for that, and it's also Fourth of July, so there's just there's hardly any parking here. It's really crazy. We take one of the cars and put the just totally over at my um, my in-laws' house, and we keep the other car here. Well, we. We kept it. We actually found a really great parking space right on the street, and it's one of those things where you just park your car and leave it. You don't drive it out because you'll never get a space when you when you get back. And we have a little grocery store right down the street, so we didn't need to drive anywhere. Well, the um, at the end of the whole thing, um, so probably on they left on Sunday. So they left on Sunday. It was really great. We went out and took pictures. It was really it was really kind of fun um, to see them to see them all leave, and then we came back and we were able to then move our car back to our space because the truck had gone well when we went to pick up our car we discovered that someone had basically sideswiped the car no idea when there are no cameras around it's a public street it's fourth of july weekend unbelievable oh my god so of course because we we don't have another driver um, we do have to pay the deductible on the car. We don't have a high deductible, so it, it's not that bad. But it's still, it's not, you know, I didn't want to spend that money on that. So now we have to go through the thing. The insurance will cover the, the majority of it, and we'll get a rental car. But ugh, it was just, it was not what we wanted to, not what we wanted to, to deal with. So we still have to deal with that. They have to do the appraisal. We'll, it'll go into the shop next um, 
next week, but it's going to have to have a bumper replaced on it and work done on the door. And it's just, I mean, I guess that's why you have insurance, but it's just, it was just such a, ugh, it's such a bummer when that, ha when that happens, ugh, especially because we had to move our car and from in front of our house. But it was one of those things. What are you going to, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's not for another two years and um, we'll make some alternative arrangements the next time. So it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It does not happen again. Um, but on a better note, on a more exciting note, uh, part of the 4th of July weekend celebrations here in Marblehead is, it's basically a big arts festival. So it's called the Marblehead Arts Festival. So um, we were invited to um, a little party that they had um, both at the very beginning of it, up at Fort Sewell, which was lovely. And then Mark actually chose two of his photographs to um, submit into the photography art show. They don't accept everyone. So it's kind of a, I don't know, it's, it's a crapshoot, but they have different judges every, every year. So you never know what they're kind of looking for. So he put in two photographs. Um, and one of them was at the, um, the Lee Mansion up here up the street in, um, in a snowstorm. It was really beautiful. And the second was a picture of this huge wave that, um, that came in uh, on, the, on our street, Front Street, but way up near Fort, Fort Sewell during um, one of those huge storms that we had we have in March, and this was a couple of years ago. So this is, it's a really cool picture of this beautiful, uh, beautiful wave. Uh, I'll see if I can put both of those in at the, at the end. I need to find them, see if they're <laughs> actually on my camera. Um, but, so both of his pictures were chosen to be um, displayed as part of the arts festival, which was really exciting for him. That's never happened because, you know, he's a new photographer. He just does it. He just does it for fun. He's really interested um, in it. And, but I think he has great, <laughs> great, um, great, uh, great pictures. Um, and actually, we had both of them marked not for sale because we had had them nicely, nicely framed. Um, and we weren't really re prepared for that. I mean, most people will, if you put it in there, I mean, we'll do this from now on, but we, if you put it in, you can just get your picture printed nicely, but put it in a fairly cheap frame, a cheap frame. And you can also have, um, you can sell, I think up to 10 prints of your picture if you have, if your picture is, is, um, is accepted to, to be displayed in the, in, in the photography show. So that we'll do next year. But this year, the two that he chose, we had already, had, they, we just took them off of our wall because they were already, we had them really nicely framed, etc. One of them, the wave picture, someone actually wanted to purchase it. And they contacted um, the Arts Festival and the Arts Festival contacted Mark and said, you know, we have this person would be interested in, in, in actually purchasing your, your photo. Would you like to do that? And so Mark was like, really? <laughs> he just didn't expect, expect that to happen. And um, so he said, sure. I was like, yeah, sure. We can always get that printed again. It's a nice, it, it was framed very nicely and professionally, but that's okay. Um, you know, part of the sale price, we don't get the whole sale price. Part of the sale price goes to the Marblehead Arts Festival, which is great, which is fine. So it was part of it's a donation. Um, so we said, yes. So, um, so the person that wanted to purchase it did, and we didn't have to pick it up. So it's gone <laughs> to a new home. Um, so that's really pretty, uh, that was really pretty exciting. That's the first time he's ever actually sold a piece of a piece of his, or a photograph of his. So that's really, really super special, um, special for, um, for him. Um, and he is, and I'll put, I put them, I'll put them at the end. He actually kind of has, um, had dropped off for a while on Instagram. He just hadn't, uh, some other, you know, just work kind of got in the way and he hadn't really taken a lot of pictures, but he started to take some pictures again. So he's gotten back up. So it's, he's Mark in Marblehead, at Mark in Marblehead on Instagram. Um, but again, I'll put some more of his pictures um, at the end as well. So that was super, super exciting. So that, that made up for the car. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was really, really nice. It was just a really great, fun weekend. The weather has turned hot all of a sudden. Um, I have a fan going right in here now. It's a little overcast today, but um, yeah, it's been pre pretty hot. And you know, here, what happens in the summer is we get a little, lot of humidity, so that's what comes um, that's what comes with it. Um, so it's been a little bit humid, but ho most of the afternoons we get a nice sea breeze that comes in. Um, we've had a couple of great big storms that have come through too because of the weather, but um, but you know, I'm not going to complain. You know that we have enough cold and rain and snow <laughs> in the winter time. So I'm very happy about this right now. And I really like it when I take this vacation because every morning 
I'll just take my um, my beach chair and go right across the street and go up into Crocker Park. Um, and now now that the arts festival is gone uh, is done, um, there's nobody up there. They usually have they have music music venue, so it's a little crazy here. We've got you know we had all the parties from the yacht club in one window, and we had the music from Crocker Park in the other window. So it was a little bit a little bit crazy, but they turn all those off by 10:30 at night, so it's not not too bad. But now it's quiet, so I take my book take my knitting and I just go and sit there and just look at the water and the boats and enjoy the enjoy the sea breeze um, so that's really really nice and the weather has really been beautiful up until and it's really nice now today too I think it's probably gonna rain tonight and maybe tomorrow as well but it's been beautiful beautiful weather we couldn't have asked for a better 4th of July um, 4th of July weekend is really very very nice um, so what else is happening oh I will also have some pictures um, at the end because it's the funniest it's the funniest darn thing but uh, Adam Sandler is making a movie I think in Marblehead and in Salem and maybe in Danvers as well this summer it's a Netflix film and it is uh, Halloween themed so next week they're going to be filming apparently a some type of a Halloween parade in downtown Marblehead so right now the film crew is here and they are turning downtown um, from 4th of July into Halloween. So they've got witches strung up across the street. They've got orange and black banners. All of the storefronts have, um, have decorations in them for Halloween. There are, you know, skulls and one of the houses has skeletons climbing up the side of it. And there are pumpkins, these huge pumpkins. I put a picture up on Instagram. <laughs> They're plaster. They're great, but they're all lined lined up. There are witches in the trees. There are um, they're repainting one of the buildings on the corner, and it's really beautiful. The colors that they're doing. So this is the benefit for a little downtown like this is that they a movie group will come in and they will just they'll fix everything for you. And so they're repainting one of the buildings. Um, my mother-in-law, a friend of hers, they actually knocked on her door um, and said, "We would like to look at your house." as one of the sets and she's like sure come on in and it was an old house and they are going to use that for the some of the kitchen scenes I guess and they've redone her whole kitchen um, they repainted the outside of her house and really when they come in they do this for you um, you sign an agreement that they can do this but they will put it back to what you want so this lady that if she doesn't like the color they'll they'll repaint it whatever color she wants when the filming is is done so it's really it's really exciting but it's just the funniest darn thing because it's so hot and you know you walk downtown little downtown here and again I'll have pictures I'll have pictures at the end but it's like Halloween there's like hay bales there's 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 um, there's uh, oh there's everything there's just there's just everything so it looks so funny to see so I'll be really interested um, I think uh, maybe they're gonna do a night I think they're they must be filming at night so maybe I'll get to see some of it um, because uh, they have like they have like these little pumpkins on the on the tops of the fences that um, will light up. So it must be filming at night. So maybe I'll get to see it. I'll know which it is because the buses won't be able to come down here um, that night when they're when they've set up for, for filming because um, it come the bus that I take comes right down here in the right down through that area and they won't be able to come down if they're filming. So that will be really fun. But it's just it just it just cracks me up. Adam Sandler, I think I think he's from New Hampshire originally, and he has made it. Um, He's made a movie in Marblehead before. Um, I think he likes to spend the summer up here, so I think that's really why we're <laughs> that's why they're doing it here. Since he's been here before, um, yeah. So it's it's pretty funny, um, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing that. You know, we'll, we'll watch the movie. As I said, it's going to be on Netflix, so you'll, I'll let you know when it when it when it comes out. But that will be very funny. And, you know, you watch those movies because you're not watching it for the movie. You're just watching it. Go, oh wait, I, that's where I know where that is. So. That'll be really fun, and it's just absolutely funny to see when it's just so, so hot, and to see it all decorated. I think it's supposed to be Salem, Massachusetts, of course, and um, the actual Salem area is the actual Salem area downtown is a lot bigger than you would think it is. I think probably in people's heads, Salem, Massachusetts, is what Marblehead looks looks like, where Marblehead's this tiny little tiny little place and um, Salem is a city really so it's really very very big where the museums are and things and it's um it's pretty commercialized uh, now so that's why they're you know going to be using using Marblehead for <laughs> but you know as I said 
Hocus Pocus was filmed here. So if you watch Hocus Pocus, the party house um, where the, the teenage girl lives um, is literally around the corner here um, from, um, from us. And the, the, um, uh, the graveyard that they used is the old Marblehead graveyard. So make a lot of Halloween movies here, but it's really, it's just really been, it, it's just really been fun. Um, to see, to see this, uh, kind of see this put into, putting together. Um, what else has been going on? Sophia uh, took a couple of days off. She is going up to Burlington to visit her friends this weekend. She has been doing a lot of drawing on her iPad. She has a separate, um, uh, a separate Instagram account. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll put it up and I'll put pictures of what she's been doing at the end as well. So if you want to follow her there, she does all of these drawings on, um, on the iPad. I'm like, I'm amazed. She's always like, oh, they're not very good. I'm like, I could not do that whatsoever. They're amazing. So um, I'll put those up, but she's really been getting into um, into that as well. She has been um, continuing to plan our trip to Egypt. As I mentioned the last time, she's taking me to Egypt next summer. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we're both reading, or just actually finished reading Death on the Nile once again, which was really fun. I hadn't read that in years and years and years. Because I guess one of the um, one of the parts of our trip is going to be actually we're taking a cruise down the Nile and we're going to be on this old steamer that uh, Agatha Christie used um, as a setting for for Death on the Nile. So that was really that was really fun. Um, I've gotten lots of comments from people that have either been to Egypt or um, like, oh my gosh, what a great trip that will be. So I'm really excited. I've I've gotten some really good. Um, you know, good suggestions of things and, and kind of how to dress and, and that. It's going to be very hot when we're there, obviously, because it's going to be um, in July. But, you know, we're watching some stuff on some um, some history of Japan. I mean, history of Japan, history of Egypt, um, ancient Egypt uh, shows on Netflix and Amazon Prime. It's really been really, really um, fun. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, so what I actually um, thought I would show you kind of what I've been reading as well. Uh, I actually had a, a, a recommendation um, on the last video of, about this trilogy. The first one is called Palace Walk and it's uh, by uh, Nagub Mahfouz. So this is it here. And this is about a kind of a family history um, in Egypt. And it is, um, there's three books. So I have the first one. I'm actually, I got the first one out of the library. I just want to see, I probably will purchase this. Um, I don't think I'll finish it when I have, before I have to go back to the library, but I'm really interested. Thank you very much for that recommendation. So this will be really interesting to read through before before going. Um, uh, we have been... Um, oh, and I also wanted to show you this, too. I have... This is kind of a fun book. I don't... I think I showed this before maybe on Instagram. I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast or not. If I did, it was a while ago. So I, this is The Still Metal Road by Gladys Tabor. Gladys Tabor, um, she died quite a while ago, but she was a writer in the 60s. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was, um, we've had this for a long, yeah, so we've had this for a long, a long, long time. Um, it's really a beautiful book. Um, originally, let's see, yeah, copyright 1959, 1960, 62. So she actually wrote several, like, essays. She was an essay writer, and she lived in Connecticut in this really old house called Still Meadow. And it was an old farmhouse, and it was just beautiful. And she wrote uh, one of these books, but this is what it's called. It's called Still Not a Road by Gladys Tabor. And she put together essays for each month. So there's a chapter a month, pretty much. And so she talks about life on, um, in her house and in her area with her neighbors, etc., month by month by month. And so sometimes, if I remember, I'll pick this up when, at the beginning of the month and, and, and read it. And I like kind of like to do this. We've had this for a long time. Now... Um, we actually, um, I've actually been to, to Still Meadow year, years and years ago, way back when, when, before, I think before I started college. Yeah, maybe it was right before my freshman year. My, my mother's loved these books forever. She has all of them. There's several written by Gladys Tabor. She has quite a few of them. And um, so I've, know, I've known about this book since I was a kid. I mean, it's always been around our house, and my mother gave me this copy, I think, way back in, like, 1985. So I've had this around. It's kind of beat up, but I've had it around. Um, I really enjoy it. If you run across, you don't really see these too much anymore, but if you run across any of Gladys Tabor's books, maybe in a used bookstore, I would definitely recommend um, picking them up. They're really just lovely essays about life, and they're just really, really interesting and, and lovely. and Just something, you know, a different life than, than today, even though it was not that long ago. 
Um, but anyway, so the right before I was a freshman in college, my dad used to be a private pilot, and we had a plane, and uh, we actually, I don't remember why we decided to do this, but we did, and so my mother, my father, obviously, and myself, um, I must have just kind of gone along for the ride, um, we flew to Connecticut, and we went, he, we kind of, this was like the days before GPS kind of thing, and, and so they, my mother wanted to try to find Still Meadow just to see it, and we flew to Connecticut. We landed in this tiny little Connecticut airport, and we rented a car, and we started driving all around, and she like had the book. She was trying to find the directions from like all these little clues in the, in the book. This was, you know, again, this was way before anything, really. So, um, and we remember, you know, people had no idea. We would stop and ask people, and they're like, an author. I don't know any author that lives here, and it was it was just it was one of those things where it's like wow this is really crazy and then it was also like one of those things like all of a sudden you came around this corner and there it was because you could see all the their hand-drawn pictures but it was like this is it and we stopped the car and you know my mother got out and um this woman came out the front door and it wasn't Gladys Tabor but it was her daughter and um my mother was like oh no you know because I think it was a daughter, her name was Connie, um, was like, would you like to come in and see? And she's like, oh, no, 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 I just, you know, it's just enough for me to, to see the house. And Connie's like, no, no, my mom's not here. She's, like, down in, in on the Cape. She had a um, she had a house, she had a uh, cottage on Cape Cod as well. She goes, you know, Gladys is actually on the Cape right now, but I'm here with the kids, so would you like, come on in? And it was absolutely lovely. And really, basically what she said is that anybody that comes that far and actually is able to find Still Meadow, we love it, and come on in, we welcome you in. So it was lovely, she gave us a tour, and it's just, it's a super, I mean, we have an old house, this is that old, if not older, and it, you know, it was really just a farmhouse, so it was, it was really tiny, this is tiny, but this was tinier, um, and it was really cool, and the kids were little, um, this, literally, this is like 1977, so this is forever ago. Kids were little, they were running around, we, and she took us out to the back, and we saw a little pond, and she said she brought out, she brought out lemonade. It, it was just this, like, surreal experience to, 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 um, to, to experience, and it was just, she was lovely, lovely, lovely. She signed my mother's copy of her book, and then we, um, you know, we left and made our way back to the airport, and we flew, and we flew back home, so, so, um, I always remember that. It was this crazy little trip that we did. It was lovely, but, so, I do still pull this out. And, you know, sometimes I forget I'll do start, like, start in January, in, in January, and then I'll, like, put it aside and I'll, like, forget about it until whenever. But I've kind of been reading it this year. And what I like about this, you never, just never know, you know. So she has some recommendations. She knew a lot of different authors, obviously. And she had some recommendations, not recommendations, but she's like, I like this book. And this book, you know, is, like, has a prime space on my bookshelf. Um, and I... You know, you read these things and you don't always like pay attention to them. But sometimes this time I was like, oh, you know what? I'm on vacation this week. I'm gonna look at this and read it. And she had um, a recommendation, or she um, she had talked about this book called The House on Nosset Marsh, Marsh, I should say, Nosset Marsh, on Cape Cod. And I was like, I'm just you know, just for kicks, I'm gonna see if it's in the library. And it was. There it is, right there. So I just went in and picked it up yesterday. And it's the same thing. It's kind of essays about this gentleman's little home, um, a little camp almost that he had on, um, on Nosset Marsh. Uh, so I've been enjoying reading this too. You know, we lived on Cape Cod for, um, it's, ooh, actually quite, quite a few years, maybe three years. Did we live on the Cape for three years? We had a lovely home on the Cape and the sandwich. So, you know, this again, this kind of harkens home to me, but that was really, it's really kind of fun. I'm like, ooh. So a little connection there between that. So this is another um, another great um, another great book. Um, we have also been um, binge watching TV um, on Prime Video this time around. I have uh, I we have a membership in Acorn TV, so that's British um, British shows. And I'm gonna say this show that we've been watching is called Line of Duty. We watched. We watched Deadwood. We watched all of Deadwood, and we watched the Deadwood movie. So now we're done with Deadwood. <laughs> What's going on for a while? Um, so we finished that one, and so we like to have shows that have like a series, so you can kind of stay with the characters. 
So this one on Acorn TV, it had five stars and it was it's called Line of Duty. Oh my goodness. We've been sitting down in the af late afternoon before Sophia gets home because I'm on vacation, of course, and like watching one or two episodes. And it is intense and it is so good. So if you like um, police crime drama, British police crime drama, whew, it's it's great. I mean, the, you don't the twists and turns, and we're like, oh, <laughs> what's going to happen next? And we're like high fiving each other when they finally get the right person. You know, it's one of those like you know what's going on, and they don't, and they finally figure it out, and you're like yes. But um, really, really intense, great acting. Just it was, I highly recommend it if you like that kind of crime drama stuff. Really really good and I think there's five seasons we finished three we have two more to go we're <laughs> like I don't even know where else they can go with <laughs> this but it's been really uh, really intense and really interesting and really fun so and that's what we've been doing um, for the rest of the time so so anyway so now my vacation is coming to an end after this weekend but that's okay um, that's okay we're gonna get start gearing up again for the fall semester so there'll be a lot coming on so I will add in some pictures at the end here and so I'll have some pictures of Marks, and I'll have some pictures of Sophia, and I'll have some pictures of Fourth of July and of this crazy Adam Sandler movie setup that's that's going on there as well. So um, I think that's it for now. So just remember, it's just knitting. Bye.